The Panama City Beach College Baseball Classic rolls into a final day, a championship day from 16 teams down to two, the Wallace Community College Governors. They were the winners a year ago, the defending champions taking on the Gulf Coast State Commodores on a rainy and cool day in Panama City Beach. About 55 degrees, a little bit of rain, but uh, this is the week of baseball we have had. You see Gulf Coast at the top, the number one seed, a couple of one-run wins. Meanwhile, Wallace, the number six seed, also had a one-run win early. A couple of uh, victories after that, including a 5-3-W over Chipotle to advance to this championship game. Brett Dalton, Steve Phillips, and Steve, this has been a wonderful appetizer this week just to get excited about what these teams are playing for. That championship, two 3-0 teams, and can't wait to see what we get this afternoon. And getting a chance to play for a trophy. I mean, starting out their seasons, obviously the spring season just getting rolling, uh, and the idea of going to a tournament and having something to play for, that they're just not regular season games. We're going out there trying to figure things out, but there's an extra sense of motivation to try to win. Well, there's no doubt about that. And that's where I think these teams and PG did a great job picking some tremendous local and regional teams with all kinds of talent. They're going to find out what uh, they know about their team going forward. Four games into this young year. They had to wait around a little bit today to get the chance to play in this championship. Wallace will be the visiting team for the Gulf Coast State. They are the uh, home squad today. And uh, we're going to see a handful of these position players that we have seen before. In fact, you should take a look at the lineup. It's Eubanks, Darnell, Wilmot, Vignon, Smith, Caps, Ash, Johnson, and Seaborn round out the starting nine for the Governors. Coming off that 42-19 and 19 season a year ago under coach Ryan Eiley. And they're trying to go back-to-back -back with championships. What a tremendous feather in the cap it would be for them. And... This is Ezekiel Rojas, Steve, a freshman out of Lakewood, Colorado. And anytime you get this deep into an event four days in, you've seen some of these pitchers before. Otherwise, you've used a couple of your top arms. So it always makes this day challenging. It, it can be. But I tell you, we saw Ezekiel Rojas pitch on Friday. And I tell you what, he was a strike thrower. He had great energy coming into the game. The team played behind him. He just got the ball, got back on the mound, and threw a lot of strikes, keeping hitters off balance, tremendous location and command, a very repeatable delivery, and a very athletic young pitcher on the mound. Good scouting report against this offensive team. The Governors, obviously, you get this deep. You know these teams can score runs. Been able to uh, get a few at-bats on this young season. And for that matter, even Gulf Coast State, they played three games the prior week. So they're, they're a little bit further ahead. But for Wallace, see if they can go back-to-back -back as Rojas finishes up his warm-up tosses. And, Steve, you're going to see a few guys blowing on their hands today. It's just a little bit different feel than maybe the 60 or 70 degrees from previous days. Well, it's interesting. We had the high skies on Friday and a little bit on Saturday as well. Uh, but a little cloud cover today, but the winds are starting to kick up a little bit. Fly balls, pop-ups were some difficulties over the early part of the weekend. We'll see if they impact the game today. Always a challenge. This is Eubanks to lead things off. He's a hometown product from Dothan, Alabama. Red shirt, freshman. Big Corbin Carroll fan is Eubanks, and we are underway in our championship game. Crowds filled in. See some of the parents and family members behind home plate. That ball's tagged in the gap to right center field. It's going to get down and go all the way to the fence. Chased by Horton. And how about Eubanks starting the game with an opposite field double? Well, I got a pitch up in the zone uh, from Rojas. And Rojas, who was so good at commanding his pitches on Friday, leaves one up and out over the plate. Good piece of hitting right there, driving it to right center field, thinking three out of the batter's box. I like it. He rounded first. He picked up his coach at third base to help in that decision, opting to stop at second. No chance of making the first out of the inning at third base. Good heads-up play right there. The ball coming back in. And, and Jeremy Todd following just in case you ended up seeing Eubanks go off the base. Well, good beginning for the governor. This is Sean Darnell, third baseman. Chopper to third. Looking Eubanks back was Bauckham, and he's able to get that first out at first base. And again, you got to play the carpet and the big bounce, but nicely done over at third. Yeah, Bauckham did a really nice job of <clears throat> moving toward the ball and then looking 
uh, at Eubanks on second base, right? Causing him to think, oh, boy, I better get back. I better get back. And he, th- he goes diving back in. So no <laughs> chance to be able to advance on that play. Well done by Bauckham. Pick down to second base. Bit of a traffic jam as Reynolds, the shortstop, collided with Eubanks. Eubanks has had a busy couple of pitches there <laughs> trying to get back in to second base. Yeah, he's already dirty. I mean, yes. this game is <laughs> I mean, obviously it's turf, but he's out there getting dirty right now. I love he's it. got the game adrenaline. There's no doubt as Warwick Wilmot bats. This is kind of the fun aspect. These schools are separated by less than two hours. A little bit of a rivalry for Wilmot. He's from Panama City Beach. Three home runs a year ago, 46 knocked in, but I'm sure he's got a few of those family members and friends behind the screen there at uh, Public Sports Park. Another one shot foul, skipping around home plate. Wilmot very balanced at the plate. Big, strong man, young man. Taking some healthy hacks in there. Probably doesn't surprise you. He's a Bryce Harper fan with those big swings. Yeah, left-handed hitter, <laughs> big swings. Gotta love it. Just underway, a 2-1 pitch down to the dirt. Smothered by Wombless behind the plate. Like Wilbon, he said his coach, Ryan Eiley, the greatest ever. Really enjoys his head coach. He just took one back of the leg for an HBP. So there's a couple of governors on base here in the top of the first. You know, it's just such a, it strikes me watching this, how little college players get out of the way of pitches that are coming inside. In, in professional, but everyone's jumping out of the way in pro ball. He stays right in there, takes one for the team. I don't know if he could have gotten away from it. That one took a bite out of that. It's going to leave a mark, but uh, not flinching whatsoever as he makes his way down to first with runners on first and second now with one out. You're absolutely right. A couple of years ago, guys were jumping in front of them when the bats yeah. and the balls were yeah. going yeah. up to speed. And I'm talking three and four hole hitters, too. Crazy. This is Ellis Yon, Alabama native. Hit six home runs a year ago. He has a chance to do some damage right out of the gates. In fact, a year ago in this tournament, he had two home runs. And what a great start it was to his college career. He's back. He's betting cleanup today and takes that one a little bit in. Well, Rojas having a tougher time commanding the fastball today, and he's not gotten into his rhythm. He came in and had such a good rhythm on Friday, but struggling to find it a little bit right now. Yeah, the hit batteries behind the DH, and they just issued a four-pitch walk, so the bases are loaded with one out. It's probably always the concern, Steve. Sometimes... You know, either you're going to have a starter that's going to go six or seven innings and be done for the event, or there's going to be a couple of guys you might want to use early and then bring them back, and you're never sure if that second time, if if it'll be quite as smooth as it was the first. Yeah, I think the the one thing that you hear a lot of coaches talk about is early in the season trying to figure out and build pitching depth. Understanding, to your point, Brett, that that during the course of the season, uh, you know, you're going to want to use guys more than once during the course of a weekend in a series. You're going to want to be able to bring somebody back. Who can bounce back? Who eats up innings for you? And then it comes down to efficiency. And, you know, we've seen this whole weekend, based on balls and hit-by-pitches, come back and haunt teams, right? The, the strike throwers make them lump multiple hits together, link them together to try to get some outs right here. And I don't know whether right now it looks like Tyler Younger is is uh, having a word with the home plate umpire, Mike Cunningham, about where that last pitch was, but had a few words to say uh, out on the mound. A couple of those pitches didn't look bad, but they're also hitters' pitches. They were at about the belt, maybe a little bit in. Nonetheless, you see the traffic on the bases. And Jake Smith, the second baseman, another hometown product from Dothan, Alabama, will bat. Rojas could really use a ground ball at an infielder. Just see him and miss up, but again, a little bit of run and miss. Now that front shoulder opening up a little bit too much, and the arm leg and behind. He's got to slow the body down to get the arm in front. Well, I thought that might have been at the belt, but he doesn't get the call. No. So that uh, conversation on the mound did not help so far. <laughs> <It did> not. <laughs> <laughs> really in need of a strike here, and there it is for Rojas. Bronx cheer of sorts behind uh, the screen. Panama City Beach. Now he's working with a little more tempo, and he's got two strikes at about 15 seconds. Yeah. 
Two and two to Smith. There's a chopper. Rojas can't find it, and everybody's going to move up a base, and the governor score first, and Rojas, Steve, got that ground ball, and he got it back to him, but he couldn't locate it. He got what he wanted, right? He wanted to get the ground ball, and, and look, he's a sinker slider pitcher, and you've got to field your own position in that way, but just off his glove, lost track of where it went, uh, and obviously not ready uh, to be able to recover and make a play, and so everybody advances, and still one out. Brings up Brody Caps, Phoenix City, Alabama native. Hit over 300 a year ago. Another one on the ground. Easy play over at third by Bachman. His throw to first base was not handled cleanly. And the second run of the inning will score. You know, Bachman making the play did the right thing, but I, his sense of urgency of getting to the bag, I thought, wasn't what it needed to be. You've got to go get that ground ball on the charge, understanding they're going to be legging it out down the line the best they can. Go get that, move to it, and then quickly make the throw. Just not the sort of intensity that you want on a critical situation, you know, trying to keep the run from scoring. No, that's a great point. I felt like it was... Uh... A similar thought process going through my mind. Listen, you got to get to that base and make that throw in case there's a bounce or a skip or something. This is Grayson Ash. Five home runs a year ago. The catcher batting seven. A couple of runs have come across. Not sure if we're scoring that comebacker from Smith. The infield single off the glove or uh, an E1 regardless. Just really the one double of any ball hit well this inning. Mm. Well, we've seen the entire weekend pitchers working the top of the strike zone. Uh, and uh, home plate umpire Mike Cunningham, a bit different strike zone, not giving uh, Rojas that pitch. Well, that one fouled away right there at the plate. Kicked up the line, I think. Did that back go flying as well? It did from Ash. Yeah. yeah. You know, but here's the thing, uh, Brett. This is a learning opportunity right now. And I understand, you know, Tyler Younger went out to, to you know, talk to the umpire a little bit about that high pitch earlier when he did the mound visit. But it is what it is. And you have to just make the adjustment. You can't keep throwing there hoping he's going to call it at some point. You've got to make the adjustment and understand it's just not his strike zone in this game. Here's the 3 2 in that side. I wonder, Steve, if he's not necessarily aiming for this spot, is he just can't get it a little bit further down in the zone or maybe in around the knees to these hitters, these right handed batters? Yeah. The, uh, the ball back to Rojas, by the way, was ruled a base hit. Okay. I gave him the benefit of the doubt of my score cup, my score column, but uh, you never know. This is Logan Johnson, the eight hole hitter. Young man who leads Bible study for his teammates. Heard a little bit about that earlier this year in a perfect game college baseball show. That's a strike on the outside corner. Rojas does have good run on his fastball, some sinking action on it. And it's one of those pitches you started at the middle of the plate and let it run off the corner. It seems to be pretty, pretty effective to these left-handed hitters. Big bounce to Prosek, the second baseman. He'll flip to second for the force to end the inning. But the governor is able to do a little bit of damage in the top of the first. Got a couple of runs on two hits. Could have been worse. End up leaving the bases loaded. But it was the infield single by Smith. Also a fielder's choice of the ball that uh, kicked away. And this was the double by Eubanks that started off a two-run inning.
Back in Florida, Panama City Beach, see the complex that has been very busy, as you could imagine, this week. Unfortunately, Mother Nature, the weather has cooperated, as you would expect to be able to get this much baseball in. But now we've reached the championship game, and here is the starting lineup for head coach Tyler Younger for Gulf Coast State. The Commodores, Reynolds, Gupton, Todd, Ben Horton, Bacham, Prozac, Wombolis, Massey, and Byers round out the starting nine. Pitcher they're going to be facing for the Governors is Caleb Muffaletto, young man from Lafayette, Louisiana. And Stevie says he has a five-pitch mix, and he says he spins it well with something called a unicorn fastball, whatever this is. And, oh, uh, unicorn <laughs> fastball. I, 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 I mean, I don't know. Like, if Otani has 10 pitches. I don't know that he has that one. Uh, so uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but Jack Reynolds here leading off uh, for Gulf Coast. Kicked it off in the first game of the series on Friday with a double. See if he can't get things going today for them. Let's take a look back. The Clemson transfer. Slip coming out of the box, but uh, was able to cruise towards second base with the double. Pitch a little bit down and in. That one didn't look like the unicorn to me, so I'm waiting <laughs> to see. I'll see if I can point it out to everybody. <laughs> Caleb says, though, what has improved the most for him has been his fastball command over the last year. So we'll find out. Put that to the test. His mom, Melody, was a softball player there in Lafayette for the Raging Cajuns. Catcher Ash really setting up in. Pitch misses a little bit out. You know, Brett, over the weekend, one of the things on a lot of the player profiles, they talk about their parents and their parents' participation in sports. So many moms very ath athletic for these young men. Well, there's no doubt. That's ball four as Reynolds will walk. Always fun to see the siblings and the parents that have either preceded them or followed them into a uh, Baseball, softball, whatnot, but that's a leadoff base on ball. So not the way Caleb wanted to start this bottom of the first after his team put two runs on the board in the top. You know, these seven inning games, I think it just obviously it, it reinvigorates the urgency as far as getting off to a good start, maybe building a lead or obviously then bouncing back from an early deficit. Yeah, and obviously getting a mound visit right here. It's interesting, right? At first batter walk in a mound visit right away now here's the thing you get a lead and you say to yourself go at the hitters i mean e even if he hits home run it's just going to tie the game attack them do not put extra base runners on and a lot of times the early emotions in games for college kids uh their energy gets going and their body rushes forward in their delivery the arm legs behind and that's where you see a lot of misses to the arm side for pitchers and this is michael gupton the speedster I just want to see this guy put the ball in the gap and run. We've talked oh, so much yeah. about his speed and, you know, almost eye-popping world-class numbers. Perfect game, All-American. Coach Younger said, Steve, the first at bat in the fall, he hits a stand-up triple. First time they got to see him, and he's legging it out for three bases, and that must have been something. That, that, you feel like you did such a great <laughs> job recruiting when that happens. On the ground and the left for a base hit. It got by Darnell. So Reynolds will trot to second. Gupton has the base hit, and there's two base runners aboard for the Commodores. Yeah, got a ball down in the zone. Just pulled it uh, just past the diving Darnell at third base, unable to make a play. And so Gupton on, Reynolds on, two on, nobody out. And uh, that's the good way to respond after giving up two runs in the first inning, giving Ezekiel Rojas maybe a chance to catch his breath on the bench. This is Jeremy Todd. He's from Panama City Beach, Bozeman High School. Big guy and a first baseman. That one's going to go all the way to the backstop as it rode in under his hands. Both base runners move up. It looked like Muffaletto slipped uh, coming down the slope of the mound on that one and sort of stumbled toward first base as the ball got away from him uh, on it. And you see him come through there. And, yeah, his, his leg kind of buckled on him at the end. It did. 
Uh, wondering what that was from, if it just was slipping or, or something with his leg itself. Something to watch. 2-0 to Todd. He takes a strike. Maybe it's not a surprise. You see that frame there, 6'3", 215. Jeremy Todd's favorite player is Alec Baum. He likes those tall infielders who prove that they can stay at those positions. They sit here, could type the game. It's so interesting how when players identify their favorite players, it's always somebody who looks just like them, right? You know, you don't see little yes. guys saying, yeah, Aaron Judge is the, my guy. <laughs> you know, it's Altuve would be their guy. Yeah, it provides a little bit of inspiration. That looked like a pretty good pitch, and it was called a strike to Todd. Otherwise, he was going to be on his way to first with ball four. Let's see it again. Yeah, and a uh, little sinking fastball right there at the knees. Nice job behind the plate by Grayson Ash to lift that one up a little bit. Here's the payoff off the fingertips, and that's going to get by Eubanks into left center. Gupton has the great speed, remember, so he will turn third, and did he come home to school? I thought Eubanks was going to make that play on the carpet, but Todd must have had just enough to get it by him and send it down to the center field. You know, Gupton had to wait a little bit because it was, you know, it was jam shot. You know, I think he almost wondered whether it was going to get caught in the air for some, uh, and so he hesitated. Uh, and uh, you're right, with that speed, you would have thought, I still might have sent him, but with nobody out and a chance for a big inning, it's the right decision uh, to wait right now because the likelihood is you will find a way to get him in, even with a productive out. Yeah, I was curious. I thought, you know, there's probably no way they're going to throw him out, but you're right, nobody out. No need to run into it out. Horton smashes one deep left center field. Back to the fence. It's going to take a bounce and go towards the wall. Gup to the trot hole. Todd to third. A ringing double by Horton. And right back come the Commodores. They've taken a 3-2 lead. Wow, what a start. What a first inning of this game. But again... You know what? You get the ball up in the zone, you know, playing for the weekend. Everybody's got their teeth sharpened, seeing pitches, the quality of the at-bats, comfortable there. And he drove that into left center field, and uh, he's happy about it, I think. And I'm yeah, not I sure what that move was, but I think he's happy about it. <laughs> he seems happy. He does. <laughs> Here's Bauckham, who had a big blast a couple of days ago, in fact, in a 2-1 win against Pearl River. And I think that was the... First game of the weekend, he had a go-ahead homer in the fourth inning that proved to be the final run. Nobody out. Ash unable to secure that pitch. Wasn't sure if Muffaletto was going to get the call or not, but the count now 2-0. Let's go back and take a look at this home run. Fourth inning shot, made it 2-1, and that's the way the game would finish. A ball up in the zone, and he absolutely drove the bottom of the baseball right there. Made it 2-1, they beat Pearl River, and a big part of why they're here in the championship game. And that's what's so unique about this event. I mean, this is single elimination, so despite the fact both of these teams are 3-0, both had some nail biters early in the week that could have turned their fortunes in a different direction, but credit to them for both coming out on top through their three games to this point. That's ball four. That's five straight, Steve, to begin the bottom of the first inning. Wow. That have reached. Yeah. I, you know, it's uh, not the, not, certainly not the way you want to go. And, and as we talked about, you're getting to the fourth game of the weekend. You've gone through your pitching. You're, you're testing your depth. Uh, and, you know, you're also giving kids opportunities to show what they can do and how they can work out of adversity. And, and a lot of adversity is certainly here in the first inning. Drew Prozek, second baseman, the batter. I think you see it a lot at the Division I baseball regionals where you're playing three games in three days, sometimes four or five games, where you get to that final game that decides whether you win the regional or not, similar to today as far as winning this tournament. Sometimes you're going with pitchers that haven't had big roles for you prior because you're normally built around three men, three starters, maybe a fourth, handful of key guys in the bullpen. So it is a land of opportunity once you get this deep. And uh, I think both of these head coaches were hopeful that their pitchers might get off to a good start and give them three, four innings, if not more.
Big breaking ball in there for a strike. Got the breaking ball at the top of the zone, but uh, like Cunningham, the umpire has not called the fastball much at the top of the zone. See if Muffaleno can get that first out. That ball stroked into right for a base hit. It'll score a run, maybe two. The throw home is not in time. Prozac ripped one into right field, chased home. Two more runs. Good piece of hitting, Got, went down to the zone to get it, but over the heart of the plate, right? It's not in the corners, that's right down the middle of the plate. Down, a little down to the zone, but right in the wheelhouse for a left-handed hitter. This is Wombles, the catcher. He is the seven-hole hitter, and again, nobody out in the bottom of the first. Phoenix City, Alabama native. That got the knob of the bat. Hmm. Yeah, here's the thing. Even if it hit him, the way this inning's going, I might just say, I'm going to stay and hit. I don't want to go to first base. I want to, have to take a chance to swing. Uh, and it did. It looked like it hit the knob of the bat right there. Choked up just a little bit, so it didn't bite any part of his hand. We saw Colton way back for a 14U PG Select Festival. He was on Team USA at the age of 15, won a gold medal. We saw some activity down in the bullpen. Four runs saw him in the bottom of the first after the governor's got two in the top. That's the pitch that Muffaletto has really been trying to calibrate, drop in for a strike, but he didn't get it. Yeah, if you can't get your breaking ball over, one, it puts you behind in the count, then you've got to throw a fastball, and they're sitting on that fastball and driving it right now. Soft ground ball rolled foul. Better breaking ball right there, down in the zone. Right, start it at the knees and then break it down out of the zone to get the hitter to swing over the top of it, or the only thing you can do is try to spoil it and foul it off. Like exactly what he did. Governors need an out. Long pause before a 2-2 pitch. Off the corner and missing. Bakum at second. Prosec at first. Pretty good job, 3-2 to spoil that one. That may have been a little bit down in the zone and the count stays full. Yeah, but good job right there. Defending, you know, trying to battle to, to at least extend the at-bat, fighting that pitch off, hoping that maybe he can get a mistake that's up in the zone a little bit more. Walker Altman warming up the bullpen. Muffaletto again still looking for that first out. Here's the 3-2 that he missed. I think there's some confusion on the count right now. Our plate umpire, Mike Cuttingham, asking. They might have to get together and confer. We had a couple of foul balls. We had a ball off the knob and whatnot. Well, not only did he not want to take the hit by pitch, he doesn't want to take the walk either. Uh, and, you know, wonder. remember, we go back to earlier in the inning with Muffaletto when he slipped going down the mound, right? Remember, he, he sort of right. knee buckled a little bit. And then he's not been able to command his pitches. And they're out there talking to him a little bit now. And they're looking down at the ground. And it's making you wonder whether there's something going on physically with him and whether he can stay in the game and pitch. No, I think that'll be this discussion point now going forward. Apparently, he's going to, at least for the time being, keep himself in this game. But, but you're right. He, we saw him buckle and, and kind of slip, and he's just kind of fought that command since. Remember, he talked about his fastball command really improving the most. Big Dustin May guy, but right now he's fighting it maybe on multiple levels. Another 3-2. On the ground to third. Darnell with a nice play. Can they get two? They will not, but they get the uh, fourth. Good effort at third by Darnell. Darnell. 
Governors really needed that one. I think they're trying to have a discussion whether or not the slide at second base uh, could have interfered in some way or he went in beyond the base to take mm. him out. You're right. Uh, it, you know, it looked like to me that's a good clean takeout. He still could touch the base, and my, you know, I suspect there's nothing wrong with that. Give a lot of credit though to Jake Smith hanging in there on the turn of the double play. Ryan Eiley out there arguing the case about turning the double play, and uh, was he in some way taken out illegally that could cause the double play to be finalized? It's a little bit easier, I think, to gauge intent on dirt than it is on carpet. Sometimes you can really just go in hard and try and get there quickly and then just go for a ride. But it did make a tremendous impact on Smith. And he, you're right, Steve, just a great job to hang in there. It's a wonder that throw didn't bounce a couple of times or maybe go to the screen. Yeah, he did a great job hanging in. Now, one of the things at second base, you want to make sure uh, that that when that happens, and I guess you're going to make a pitching change here, but when that happens and you're at second base, you want to make sure you get up in the air so that when you get hit, you don't have your foot locked into the turf and your knee potentially at risk of getting hurt. Talked about Altman. Georgia native has been warming up in the bullpen for quite some time, but Muffaletto will depart. We'll step aside. It's been a busy first inning. A couple of runs for the Governors. Commodores have answered with four back, not done. We'll be back right after this. I never let myself believe that I was going to be in the big leagues. I always worked for it until I achieved it. Back in Puerto Rico, I remember my dad would hit me ground balls from the top of the hill. That forced me to always move my feet. There were no limits to where I could go, so I played with no limits. Look at Walker Altman, Georgia native. Torres Labrum back in his junior year in high school, so that's a bit of a process coming back. His fastball will sit 85 87, curveball 72 74. Mixes in a change as well. Clayton Kershaw is his favorite player. He inherits a little bit of a mess. Four runs have come across already, a couple of runners on base. He's like any left hander, he's got a little bounce, a little. A little yeah. crazy to him already. Long strings on the glove, dangling and flopping around out there. But but what I do like is they need a little energy right now, right? The defense has been in the field for a long time this half inning. And so to have somebody come in that wants to just attack hitters and have that energy could lift everybody up. This is Colton Massey, the DH. Takes a big bender for a strike. Massey, he has my favorite note of the weekend. He's a distant relation to Ty Cobb there in Columbus, Georgia. Wow. One ball, one strike. You notice I mentioned he was a Kershaw fan. He's wearing 22 as Altman. No yeah, surprise right, there. <laughs> right. Looks a little faster than Kershaw, but he missed down two and one. You're and right, Matt. though, Steve. He brings that energy. He's going to force. He's going to elevate the uh, the temperature on the field. He is. He you know, and, and they need that right now, right? Everybody's on their heels a little bit, just feeling like, what is going on? I think you're in survival mode in a sense. You know, four runs is not what they want to see the Commodore score, but they're just trying to get off the field, limit the damage, and get their hitters back up. Now Altman wearing 22 for Kershaw. And uh, Massey wearing 24. Ty Cobb didn't wear a number, I don't think, when he played. 
You knew tied by the spikes. Oh, did that thing kick fair? How about the strange bounce off the carpet? Massey's going to get himself a base hit out of that. And an RBI. Wow. That's living right. I mean, that is that is the spin of the baseball taking it back in off a of turf, which is so interesting, right? Uh, that it that it and actually come back in, <clears throat> and and that's why you play it out. Now, you know, you see the runner coming down the third baseline, uh, and uh, uh, and Wobbles, and you think to yourself, don't get hit by that ball because he went into fair territory to avoid the defenders, which was the right move. But coming down that third baseline. And he says, all right, I can't get hit by the ball. I know I should be in foul territory, but to avoid it, I had to go into fair territory. Yeah, that was dangerous. That could have turned out a much different way for the Commodores. Bank Byers, the ninth man to bat this inning. Five have come across. Another hometown product is Bank Buyers. Goes by Juicy J, his nickname. <laughs> he fouls one right at the plate. Interesting. Uh, you know, his, his initials are BB. So, you know, I don't know where the J comes from. Yeah, it makes you want to ask an immediate follow-up where you get yeah, Juicy J. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> like, why is that your nickname? Yeah. He's a big Mookie Betts guy. Ahead in the count, two and one. Daring lead by Wombles out there at second. And that one is rolled foul. Myers had an uncle that played at Alabama. His grandfather played football at Alabama. Had a brother that played football at Troy, so another athletic family. Altman misses in. Good take right there. Not offering. 3-2 count right now. And, and we saw you know, when Altman came in, he started off with a breaking ball. You wonder on 3-2 what he'll do here. Runners at first and second. That's down for another base hit. It's going to chase him. Wobbles from third. He'll score with a tumble and a dive. It's a six-run inning for the Doors. Well, good battle at the plate. Byers did a really nice job taking it to 3-2. Short, quick stroke right there, right? Cut it down, understanding two strikes. I want to put the ball in play. And uh, I really like that approach. Did not try to do too much, right? You see so much right now at the major league level. Guy swinging for the fences. But he really cut his swing down and said, let me just get the bat head to the ball and see if I can't put it in play. And when you do that, good things can happen. Turns the lineup over for Jack Reynolds, who walked way back earlier to start this inning. Started him again with a breaking ball, but missed to Reynolds. Pitch rides up and out. So Muffaletto started. Altman has been on now. This is his third batter. We asked these guys what their favorite baseball memory has been or event. And Altman said this event, just enjoying hanging out with his teammates and his guys. Well, he's not hanging out now. He's been thrown right into the fire trying to get it out. And this is an important at bat because with Gupton on deck, who is very difficult to double up, right? And so you think to yourself, if, if you don't get an out here and you load the bases with one out, Gupton's a guy that, that I mean, it's going to have to be a line drive right at somebody to be able to turn two to try to get out of this inning still. 
It certainly just continues to magnify the importance of winning these pitches and these at bats. And that is ball four, and the bases are loaded. We'll send at least 11 men to the plate this inning. You know, this is where you're saying, listen, let's get strike one. Get in the zone, strike one. You know, let's focus on that. Yeah, don't worry about a perfect pitch. Get a strike right now. Let's see how patient Gupton will be. He's got one of the six hits this inning for the Commodores. Offered it a low one, fouled it away, and it'll be at a play. You know, at this point, I mean, you have to ask yourself, do you catch the long foul ball and let another run come in? Or do you let it fall and, you know, try to get the out without a run scoring? I suspect at this stage, take some outs. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Right now, they have been so tough to come by. These defenders have been out there for a long time this half inning. Captain Chase's wave at a miss. Captain from Raleigh went to NC State, just only got a handful of at-bats. So it made it easier for him to come the JUCO route, get a lot of ABs in the fall. I suspect he'll see a lot in the top of this lineup for Gulf Coast State. Is that a strike? Boy, that was at the top of the zone. You could see the reaction from Ash, the catcher. He wanted a ring up. And uh, Mike Cunningham, the home plate umpire, hearing, uh, looking into the dugout uh, as well. And, uh, you know, understand a little bit of chirp in there. And, and, but at this stage of the game, I get begging a little bit for a pitch. Then Ullman comes back and gets the swing and a miss for strike three. First out, he's recorded. Second out of the inning. Well, he's thrown so many breaking balls down to the back foot of the right-handed hitter that, you know, this time to Gupton, he ends up going to the outer third of the plate. They set up a way. Off the plate, some and Gupton not able to go because he opened up, thinking inside and not able to get the. I mean, he's you know the ball was beyond the end of the bat on that swing. And big Jeremy Todd who had an RBI single earlier this frame has a chance to do even more damage. That's the pitch right there. You think if he can get those right-handers to chase like Upton did, maybe it'll help him out. But Todd able to lay off that pitch, and it wasn't able to catch the outside corner either. Good pitch over the inside corner. You know, I think that, that for Altman, just to get through this inning, get in the dugout, catch your breath a little bit, and get a clean inning where you're not with, you know, dealing with bases loaded all the time could be a real relief as this game moves forward. That strike three called, a bit of a delay call from Mike Cunningham. He's hearing it from Jeremy Todd. Cunningham saying, you guys sent 12 men to the plate. You scored six <laughs> runs. <laughs> and the inning comes to an end. That was a busy, busy first. A lot of base hits to kind of run through. Six runs came across, six hits through two different pitchers. And quite a beginning for Gulf Coast here in our championship game.
Slate Seaborn leads off the top of the second. He's the only man who hasn't batted in this game. Facing Rojas. Couple of runs for the Governors in the top of the first, and then the Commodores answered with a six spot at the bottom of the inning. Seaborn hit 242 a year ago. Rolls one slowly on the carpet to short. Reynolds will make the play, and that is a really quick out to begin the second. Grading on the curve. You, you don't know how Rojas is going to respond or react to this, is that, you know, he sat for a long time for that half inning, but getting the lead like that, now that aggressiveness can play. And you see right there, ground ball to shortstop. Uh, Reynolds coming in, making the play on the run. Smooth. He's played well this weekend. Good start to his campaign. Back to the top of the lineup for Kaysen Eubanks, who doubled to begin the game and scored. Wallace was had it? an injury to their shortstop, Steve, uh, Corey Berry, and he was going to be a big piece this year. So Eubanks has kind of taken over that role and has uh, enjoyed his two-base hit today. That, that double was today? <laughs> uh, <it's>, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was a while ago. It was a while ago. That was an active first inning. I mean, the thought was, look at these governors. They scored two runs, jumping out on top in the championship game, and now they're running uphill down four. Fouled away off the bat of Eubanks. Good Just started this hitting. game. Yeah. yeah, good piece of hitting early in this game. Got a pitch up and out over the plate. Thought, I'll just drive that to right center field and get things started. And he was fired up getting to second base. That's on the ground to first. Todd took a little extra time to straighten and then throw to first to Rojas covering. And a couple of ground ball outs here in the top of the second. Yeah, well executed, though. You know, the pitcher's fielding practice spent a lot of time. We've talked about a lot this weekend. But the ground ball to first base. Uh, and Todd coming over to range over to make the play. And, you know, for, from... Rojas, you've got to get to the base, right? Get to the base as quickly as you can. Uh, and then pause to be able to catch the ball and step on the bag. He's looking for a perfect inning. Is Rojas. Sean Darnell rolled out to third his only time in. Sophomore who had 374 a year ago. So many returning pieces in this lineup. That's an easy big bounce of the pro second second. How about that, Steve? A one, two, three inning with three ground balls. And they said it couldn't happen. <laughs> uh, you know, but well done. And look, good response right there by Zico Rojas. Regrouping after that tough first inning. His teammates picked him up. Got himself a 6-2 lead. let myself believe that I was going to be in the big leagues. I always worked for it until I achieved it. Back in Puerto Rico, I remember my dad hit me ground balls from the top of the hill. That forced me to always move my feet. There were no limits to where I could go, so I play with no limits. City Beach College Baseball Classic. That's what they're playing for, the championship, the trophy. Wallace, of course, last year won it. I got a kick out of their head coach, Ryan Ely. He said, four games in, I got to temper my guys down and say, hey, we've got 52 more to go, but it is a great way to start a, a season. A lot of momentum if you can win a championship here in Florida in the very first weekend. Certainly is, and, and uh, they've got some work to do right now to get back into this one. Uh, and they need to put up some zeros. We've talked a lot about it. The key to a bullpen is not always about holding a lead. It's often hold the deficit and give your offense a chance to come back. And certainly Walker Altman is going to try to do that uh, for them right now. He'll also have the benefit of a clean inning. He got a couple of strikeouts the last two batters he faced to the two and three hole hitters. So four, five, and six in the second. Horton, Bacham, and Prozac. 
Cole Horton had a run scoring double. Really kind of kick started that frame. Commodores again had a 2 1 win against Pearl River, 5 0 victory against St. John's, and then a 4 3 win over Northwest Florida State. So nothing has really been easy. This must feel like a massive league considering they've been playing in a couple of one run games to this point. Did play in the opening weekend when most teams didn't, and they beat three top 10 teams. So they do have the benefit of six games under their belt. And from an at bat standpoint, it, you know, you. You go from early in the year when it's cold, you're just trying to see some live ABs. Now seven games in to be able to get 20, 25 at bats. This was earlier today, Steve would say. Just an inning ago, this double to the gap as Seaborn got over there and cut it off before it got to the fence, but uh, still did his damage. He certainly did. Went down and got a fastball down on the zone and drove it. Another pitch right there, good healthy swing. He likes the ball down to the zone. He just drops the bat head to it, gets the bottom half involved in the swing. Big, strong young man. Local product, Panama City Beach. Dad played college baseball. Cole from Mosley High School. Horton didn't look like he got that quite off the barrel, but he flies it to center where Seaborn is there to make the catch. You know, it is interesting to watch, and you know, there's and when you evaluate talent and watch hitters, so that right there, he drove that ball fairly well to center field, but you're right, he did not get it on the good part of the bat. That might break a wood bat where he hit it, though, right? He got it in on the hands a little bit, and he got jammed. And the, a wood bat might break, and the ball might actually flare and fall in. Well, that one went out to fairly deep center. You know, it's interesting when he hit that ball. I was curious that maybe he was a little bit jammed, and then you saw it carry and kind of fly out to a reasonable part in center, but he obviously didn't get all of it. Told you about Bauckham's homer earlier in this event. He walked back in the first. Almost got that bounce back to him. We'll see his chest kind of breathing. He's, uh, he's, he's fired up. Missed that one down and in. Now, that's not a bad 0-2 pitch right there. Throw the breaking ball down and in. See if he can get him to chase it. Good take by Bachman. Or Bauckham, but uh, I suspect that he's going to get a fastball ultimately away here, and then they'll come back with that slider down and in. Slider again. He's both trying to keep this deficit from ballooning and also trying to find a little momentum. I'm not sure how long they like him to pitch today, but that's down for a ball when your starter. Muffaletto gives you a third of an inning. That might change your thought process on how long you'd like to use Altman. One thing's for sure, he doesn't want to lose him after starting 0-2. Chopper's going to, well, that's a foul ball at the plate. We've already seen one little unique bounce off the carpet. But uh, that was called foul right away by Mike Cunningham behind the plate. You know, it doesn't matter what level of baseball you're watching. Base on balls, walks, uh, come back and haunt you. Extra base runners, they move in advance runners, they just... You know, they, they change the positioning of defenders. The first baseman's got to hold the runner, creating holes in the field. Make people earn it. Don't just give them the gift of putting them on base. That's a pretty good pitch. Called ball four. Altman was trying to dot that at the knees over the inside corner to the big right-handed batter. But just did miss. Maybe a little lower in. Yep and uh, not quite framed in the way that uh, he could stick it from Grace and Ash behind the plate. A lot of times you just want to reach out and grab that one and hold it right there to give the umpire a look before it moves itself out of the zone. Drew Prostak had a two-run single last inning. Yeah, 
Bruce, a Mississippi native. Had his mom named Brett, which I, I find interesting as a Brett, but uh, she played softball at Arkansas, where I call a little bit of softball and baseball. And had an uncle, Matt, that played baseball at Arkansas, was with the Brewers. And maybe no surprise then, Drew's a big Christian Yelich fan. One on, one out, one ball, one strike. Rosek was late on that swing. Yeah, he had seen so many sliders that uh, it's almost like in his mind he was thinking, I, I'm on the fastball, but I really think it's going to be a slider, and he was just behind the heater. Oh, I think that's exactly what transpired. He was sitting on something else. Got a bigger breaking ball there that carries outside. And it's okay to do that. If, you, you know, if you've got early enough in the count as a hitter and you're ahead, you can look for a pitch, but if you don't get it, you have to take it. You can't just swing at the other one because you want to live to have another pitch to be able to get a full cut at. Well, that front door breaking ball for strike three. That might have been one of the better pitches we've seen Altman break off so far this afternoon. That was an excellent pitch, right? The breaking ball, it's tough on a left-handed hitter because it starts right at you. You flinch a little bit and give up on it. And it, there it was. He flinched a little bit, then Prozac gave up on it, and then it broke right into the zone. I have nightmares still about that pitch from my playing days. <laughs> That's no fun. Bumbles. Behind the count, nothing and one. He avoided grounding into a double play. Reached on a fielder's choice with the help of a hard slide by his teammate at second. And would later score in the inning. Eight runs combined in the first. If Altman can retire, Wombles here will have a scoreless second. He does just that. Back-to-back -back Ks. He got Prosec looking, gets Wombles swinging, works around the walk. Two innings into our championship game. Kind of held serve that frame on this nice pitch. Getting over 6-2 or score. Welcome back to Panama City Beach. Go to the third inning, 6-2 our score. Gulf Coast State in front. Governor's ready to bat here in the third inning. See our QR code in the bottom right of your screen. Scan that. You can download Perfect Game TV. All of our games, our shows, great app to uh, stay involved with the pulse of amateur baseball. Warwick Wilmot hit by a pitch in the first. Leads off the third. Well, certainly Walker Altman uh, pitching for Wallace got the momentum shifted. You wonder whether it's translated into the offense now. 
almost in a little bit of sunshine as well. So we went from some cooler temperatures and some rain and a lot of runs in the first to maybe just enough sunshine and a little more pitching as we get into the third. You know, this game can change. You know, it's, people don't always think about momentum in baseball, but what, what that happened that last half inning, to get out of that, a couple strikeouts, turn the tide. It was a nice pitch there for strike three at the knees inside corner as Rojas able to dot this one exactly, I think, where he wanted to spot it. Well, he keeps going to that outside corner, and, uh, and then he comes right back inside right there and freezes him, right? Every pitch has been that two-seamer running away. And then he comes forcing fastball on the inside corner and freezes Wilmot. This is the D.H. Yon who walked and scored in the first. Yeah, Young man in the box is kind of an interesting Juco position breakdown. He's a catcher, he's a pitcher, he's a left fielder, and today he's D.H. <laughs> He seems confused. I don't know. I, I, you know. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. But what I do like is when it offers versatility, obviously, uh, to uh, Ryan Eiley. But I think also uh, it's uh, a guy that loves to play and just will do whatever it takes to get on the field. Yeah, it certainly is a benefit for Coach Eiley to have that option, maybe to bring him on to pitch a couple of innings, throw him in a DH spot if need be, catch. Chopper on the carpet to third. Bacham got there quickly to get to that baseball and able to retire Jan at first. Don't look now. That is now six in a row set down by Rojas. He's gotten into a bit of a rhythm right now. You know, he gets hitters to top the ball into the ground. He gets it again right here. Malcolm comes over, fields the ball on the run, makes the strong, accurate throw, showing a lot of athleticism at third base. Smith on a roller to short, right to Reynolds. And that throw is going to get away, though. He had a chance for a quick one, two, three inning, and Reynolds had all kinds of time, but his throw was wide of Todd at first. Sometimes that ball hit right at you where you do have time. You start to think about the throw and what's going on uh, can, can, you know, mess things up a little bit. And, you know, you've got to get your rhythm going with your feet and make the strong, accurate throw every single time. Really would have helped Rojas out, though, from a pitch standpoint to have that quick inning. As Cap steps in. Reached on a fielder's choice is only at bat to get an RBI. Good pitch for a strike. Well, seven of the eight outs uh, that Rojas has gotten have been on the ground. Uh, so that sinker ball is working. Got the one strikeout uh, to start off the inning with Wilmot. But otherwise, it's been a lot of ground balls and fielder's choices that he's gotten. Trying to put up a zero here in the third. And... Keep this at a 6-2 game. Ready and pitch it. Another chance for Reynolds. He'll take this himself for the fielder's choice to end the inning. So an air and a base runner left. We play two and a half innings. It remains a 6-2 game with the Commodores leading the Governors in our championship contest. What's going on, guys? I am with Soldier Sports, and they just newly released their tank, BB Core Drop 3. Uh, the pop is insane. It's got an incredibly good feel. Feels a little bit like a voodoo with that balanced feel. Uh, the hand is great, little flare knob. Um, we're going to take some swings here, check out some extra videos, and see how it tests. 97. 99. So as you can see, I mean, this thing's hot. Uh, it's got great feel. I'm really loving it. So go check it out, Soldier Sports US. Let's go. Being in the wild is the best when you're with your family. We do all 
kinds of different things I can. Go fish. Surf. Dive. I think I'll probably be coming out here the rest of my life. Beautiful Florida. You can have the perfect day to be on the beach, but I tell you what, there's a lot of people in middle America or out west that would uh, trade places. They'd put up with 60 degrees or upper 50s. Like Darren Sutton out there floating on that flamingo in the water. I think it was. Yeah. I think that's exactly who that was. Well, the Commodore scored six in the first. Didn't add to it in the second as Altman worked around a walk with a couple of strikeouts. He'll look at Massey, Byers, and Reynolds, 8, 9, and 1 here in the bottom of the third inning. Massey had the infield single on that little chopper that went up the third base line and maybe hit a seam and then kicked fair. Massey's a good-looking athlete. I mean, he is a big, strong kid, 6'2", 185, good frame, a lot of projectability there, and obviously the good bloodlines. It's interesting sometimes, and listen, my son played Juco baseball just a couple of years ago, and you look at kids, and sometimes they look obviously undersized. Every once in a while, maybe you don't get the best body. Sometimes you get a kid you know he's going to put on 10 or 15 pounds, that'll propel him maybe to the next level, an opportunity to play at the D1 ranks, if not get drafted at some point. But this is a good frame. You're right by a mass. Downstairs. Hanging in tough on the left-handed pitcher, Altman. But Massey doing a good job. That front shoulder stays closed. He doesn't give. He's got the elbow guard. He's got the shin guard. He's got it all right now. Hello. <laughs> Hard to believe Massey could lay off a pitch that close. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit outside. Slips out of his hand a little bit here in the grip. And uh, I would say more than a little bit. It slipped out of his hand. And uh, um, it hit the bull, I think, is what it did. Uh, for those who watch Bull Durham along the way. But... Uh, yeah, but listen, right back on the mound, execute your pitch. He gets a swing and a foul ball. I think those people in that tent flinched for a split second when that <laughs> yeah. ball was coming. <laughs> um, I think the guys in the truck did, too. Let's see if he can win the battle despite that pitch. And he does. How about that? Good strike three to Massey. You let one go that misses your target by 30 feet, then you paint for strike three. Yeah, it's well executed. You know, threw a lot of breaking balls, threw inside a few times there. Then you go back away to lock him up. He doesn't think it's going to go out there, and if it is, it's going to be the breaking ball. You throw a fastball right on the outside corner. Really well done. That's five strikeouts now for Altman. Facing Byers, who singled in a run way back in that first out of the nine hole. Past summer, Byers played in a summer league in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Hometown product, Panama City. Look at his numbers from a year ago. And there's a handful of guys that maybe played a little bit as freshmen. Oh, going to be in the air to center and playable for Seaborn, who makes the catch. He went 17 for 39 last year, a 436 average. That tells me he didn't he didn't get enough opportunities when that average yeah. can be at 436. Right. Play him some more. This young man is saving the day right now for Wallace, My being goodness. able to, to eat up some innings, get some outs, and uh, put some zeros up on the board. Reynolds fouls that to the plate. You think about it, Steve. We came in after seven batters had hit in the bottom of the first. Massey had that infield dribbler that, that kicked and rolled fair. Then Byers got a single off him. Since then, he's faced nine batters. He's not given up a hit. 
done a really nice job. And, and, you know, listen, you give some length here, you may evolve into a starter instead of somebody coming out of the bullpen down the road. Good pitch to Reynolds. You know, and what, it's amazing what, once... Go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry. You know, I was going to say, what you, these kids all need to... Uh, and young men need to understand is that every pitch, every inning is an opportunity to show your ability. It doesn't matter the score, the situation, whatever. There's always somebody watching from a four-year school or from professional baseball. And so take, do not ever take a pitch off. Whether you're running the bases, whether you make an error, hang in your head, don't, don't ever give anybody a reason to put a check mark next to your name. Just play it out every single pitch. Great advice, great pitch. Wave it a miss. What an inning for Altman. Six strikeouts now as he's worked into the uh, fourth inning. Remember, he just got the final out in the first. Well done. Two or three hitting, 6 2 our score. Well, Ezekiel Rojas had a couple of good innings there in the second and the third. He's going to give way to Ben Clenny as we go to the fourth inning with the Commodores up 6-2. to two. Clenny from Crawfordsville, Florida. Says he likes to pound the zone as much as possible, and we'll find out. This is Grayson Ash. The catcher who walked in his only A-B. That's a great attribute. Coming in, pound the strike zone, throw strikes. Ash, a year ago, hit 274 with five home runs. On the ground to short. Reynolds will make that play on the run. Retires Ash to begin the fourth inning. I tell you, Reynolds can really play some shortstop. You know, the, the ball, slower hit ball, hit to his right. You've got to move your feet to get around it a little bit, field it, and then make the throw on the run. And what I've seen is he's been able to make accurate throws. He had the one ball that got away from him, but mostly accurate throws from different arm angles, which is a great attribute for a shortstop. Because I'm not sure how many games they're going to play on turf. You start to get back to your normal fields, and that's where that footwork and that glove work gets tested even more, and the ability to charge a ball that might not be hard hit off the grass, off the dirt. Logan Johnson, the batter, you get spoiled on that turf on that opening weekend. If it yeah. rains, you can keep playing, and you get a bad hop, you'll, it'll even itself out. Yeah, what a great event. I mean, you know, we got spoiled with the weather on, on Friday and Saturday, and then obviously a little rain earlier, but it's cleared up nicely right now for the championship event. Hit, 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 hit. 
Johnson flies one off to very shallow left. Byers there, and he puts it away, and there's two outs. I think it's a lot of fun for these teams to come down and kind of get a barometer of where they stand against some of the other top JUCOs in the country. Some of these teams we'll see in Grand Junction later on once the entire regular season is played out. For coaches, I think you get a feel for, for what you like after week one. Get your pitchers some innings. And obviously then these teams playing for a championship. Yeah, this is just the beginning of the marathon. I mean, we're going to end up playing 50, 55, 60 games. Uh, you know, you're six, seven games into the season. There's a lot of baseball left to be played. I think it's great for the scouts, though, a perfect game, too. I mean, you can see these kids early, and maybe, again, if you see them in Grand Junction later on, you'll, you'll see them late. You get a kind of one-stop shopping for the scouts and for the players. They get to play against top competition. We can have a play at first. That's close, but out is Seaborn. Bakum at times looks a little bit casual at third base, but he got enough on that throw to get it out, even though Seaborn went diving at first. Yeah, I mean, he came charging in, and this was going to be a do-or-die play for him, knowing that Seaborn hustling down the line, uh, legging it out down there. He knows it's going to be a tough play. Bachman comes, Bachman comes in and makes it, and uh, really good play. That's Those are do-or-die plays. You don't know whether you're going to get them or not. And if he beats it out, it's an infield hit. And boy, diving at first base right there, laying it all out for his teammates. Oh, yeah. Wait for this one. Of the fourth we go, it's a four run lead for the Commodores. They came in as the number one seed of these 16 teams. Playing here at the Publix Sports Park in Panama City Beach. Altman's done a fine job. He got the final two outs with a couple of Ks in the first. That one by Gupton, skied in the air, deep left center field. That ball is gone. Gupton begins the bottom of the fourth inning with a solo homer to left center, and he kicks the extra point. It's a 7-2 game. Yeah, he's uh, he is a strong young man. I mean, we talked about his speed, which is world class. You know, a fast 60-yard dash would be 6.7 seconds. He's under six seconds. He can absolutely fly, but he is also a strong young man. He reminds me a little bit build-wise of Curtis Granderson, or, or uh, Michael Bourne was an outfielder, played with the Guardians a little bit, I think Diamondbacks, but uh, strong and can run, and he knew he got that one. Also an outstanding bat flip on his part as well. <laughs> I had born with the Astros when I was there, and every time I'd say, you got a good pop for a little guy, he says, who are you calling a little guy? And yeah. I got a feeling Gupton might tell you the same thing. Exactly. Jeremy Todd, the batter. I'll say this about Gupton, though, and this is the fun part about Juco baseball. This kid's a perfect game All-American. He's, he's not a project in the sense that, you know, you're, you're hoping to see what he looks like in two years. He was at that MLB draft combine in San Diego. You mentioned his track accolades. This was a guy who, quite frankly, just didn't get enough at bats in a college baseball world that as old as it has ever been. And, you know, trying to step in and contribute to a freshman, he didn't. So he made the decision to come here to play, and we've seen him get two hits and score two runs. Well, that's where junior college baseball has really benefited. You think about the four-year schools and what's happened with COVID and extra years of eligibility. We're backlog players on rosters and then the transfer portal. So there's opportunities for more experienced players all the time. Tuttle rolled that one foul off the carpet. 
that when we see, you know, a young player out of high school go to a four-year school and he sits for one or two years before he really gets an opportunity other than, you know, a taste of it, you know, 14 at-bats, that's not really development opportunities. Junior college, these guys have a chance to play up to 70 between fall ball and, and spring, up to 70, 80 games, 90 games. And what a way to develop your skills much better than sitting on a bench somewhere. But there's no doubt. Todd on the 2-2 is going to hammer one fair down the line and left into the corner. So Gupton had the homer. Todd's going to get extra bases as Johnson plays it back in. Altman had done a nice job, but there's Todd again. We've seen that dance twice today. We think that's a good thing. He's happy. Yeah, it's, uh, it is the way that they're doing it right now. It's what the kids are doing right now with the celebrations. But what we've seen early was Altman with that slider bearing it to the back foot of the right-handed hitters. Now he's leaving a lot of pitches up over the heart of the plate. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, it too. It takes light. Uh, and, uh, but a good piece of hitting by the young man. So the two and three hitters now third time through doing a little bit of damage in Altman. I think they got everything they wanted out of Altman. Maybe they pushed it for an extra half inning, and uh, that's going to result in a pitching change. So the one thing the governors do not want to do is fall much further behind. In these seven inning games, they're down five. There's nobody out. They're going to make a pitching change. This is the home run. I beg your pardon. This was Altman earlier when he was cruising through the third inning, the second inning. So a lot of good things out of this left-hander. Gave up a homer and a double, though, in the fourth. He has departed. We'll come back with a new pitcher right after this. Oh, yeah. Good way for this one. Pitching change as we go into the bottom of the fourth inning. Braxton Taft coming in right now. Also an infielder and uh, plays multiple positions, but uh, being called upon here, you know, into the fourth game of the weekend tournament where they need some pitching depth and some options, uh, giving this young man an opportunity on the mound. He inherits a 7-2 deficit with a runner at second base. That is Todd after he had his double. Governors won this championship a year ago. They're trying to go back to back, but right now trying to keep the Commodores from getting too much separation. Now, this is a big inning right here for, for Wallace to be able to, to, to come back in this game. They've got to stop the bleeding right now. And uh, just these additional tack-on runs are going to make a comeback very difficult if they're not able to stem the tide. And this is Horton. He's fly to center, had an RBI double. This Commodore's offense a year ago, they hit 327 as a team with 61 home runs. They revamped their offense before last year, and I thought it was interesting listening to Coach Younger on a perfect game show, Steve. He said, we're not just going to go and take BP and flip that 50-mile-an-hour toss in there and let you do your damage. They really try and replicate seeing different pitches coming off the mound, and you're seeing some breaking pitches, and it's a different style of BP, but I would say they had so much success last year, they were not about to change anything for this year. 
Well, it does make sense. I mean, you, you want to practice at the level and the speed at which you play. And, you know, what everybody's done forever is coaches would throw batting practice at about 50 miles per hour, and guys would swing out of their shoes and, and hit it out of the ballpark and feel good about themselves. But then they get into the game where the pitcher's throwing 88 to 94, and your timing's not right, you're not looking at the movement on the pitches, and so, you know, it makes a lot of sense to practice like the game situation that you're going to face. Pitch down and out, ball four. I would agree. It's not easy. To, it's not easy to do on a daily basis to find. You know, you're you're not necessarily wanting your pitchers to throw to your hitters, and coaches don't have the 88 to, right. to 94 in them anymore. Uh, and so, you know, pitching machines are the way to go, and that's what they're doing to get players know. And they put strings there that may you know, misdirect the ball some as well. There was some of that conversation. Back to the top of the lineup for Eubanks. Roller to second. Play made over at first. Yeah, this is, you know, we've seen a lot this weekend of first and second runners on and a ground ball and, and infielders choosing to get the out at first base. And it may have been the right decision here, although it, it, the major league, you may see a, a shortstop flip at the second real quick just to get the out at second base. Not to get the double play, but to take the runner out of scoring position and to leave the double play open as an option with the man on first and third. I was thinking the same thing. Just get that easier out and, and maybe limit the possibility of another run coming across. And to keep the double play in order. Prosek knocked in a couple of runs back in that six run first. Commodores had not scored again until this inning when Gupton had the homer. But with one out, a chance to really have a big blow here, and that one instead got the foot of Prosek. Dead ball HBP, and the bases are loaded. I mean, interestingly, that the hit-by-pitch saved a run, and it put a runner on first to where the double play now is back in order. And so not exactly what you want. You see the ball short hop and, and hit either off the shin guard or just above that, ah, off the side of the knee of Prosek. But you end up with the bases loaded. Now a double play still in order, and no run came in. And so honestly, it, get, it hitting the batter and may, may end up benefiting them in some way. Well, it certainly could, especially if they can get a ground ball here from the catcher, Colton Wombles. So for two, but he has scored a run. Well, he's going to try and lift in the air to uh, center. Catch made in rather shallow center by Seaborn. But it discouraged Todd from trying to score. No harm done, and the second out is recorded. Todd's kind of looking at the third base coach saying, I wouldn't have mind. I wouldn't have mind uh, running in there and, and uh, having a chance to make a play at the plate. But, uh, I mean, listen, the situational hitting, got a pitch you could drive, try to get it to the outfield, but just the depth, not quite what the decision makers, third base coach, needed to send the runner in. A little bit of a loopy throw coming in, so I think Todd might have had a chance to score. Regardless, now it's up to Massey. Was an infield single and also struck out back in the third. Batting in the eight hole for Gulf Coast. Dribbler to third. There's Darnell. Throw to first will handcuff Wilmot. Is he okay? He gets up limping a bit. I'm not sure if maybe Massey stepped on him or something happened, but the inning ends. All things considered, not bad. The leadoff home run, then a double, but only one run scores. Played four innings, so on our way to the fifth in a championship game. Gupton had the big swing, though, to start this inning to make it a five-run cushion.
go to the fifth inning. It's not do or die time yet for the defending champions, the governors from Wallace Community College in Dothan, Alabama, but it wouldn't hurt. See what they can do against Ben Clenny, who offered a 1 2 3 fourth inning in his only work so far today. So back out there against the top of the lineup, and this is Eubanks. Well, Brett, you mentioned earlier for Clenny, his own self evaluation, he likes to fill up the strike zone, likes to attack the strike zone, and that's exactly what he did uh, in the fourth inning and right back in the strike zone for strike one here in the fifth. I love it when those self-scouting reports are accurate. Every once in a while, mom and dad fill them out. And I tell you what, these kids have gotten better about this. I mean, it's almost like they're hiring PR firms at times when we get to the National Showcase or Junior National Showcase. Because, you know, I, you mentioned earlier, never let anybody see you take a play off. You know, they don't want to leave any opportunity missing, so to speak. They don't want to take advantage of every chance someone's going to read those bios or self-scouting sure. reports. Well, it's like a resume, right? You want yes, to have the right click the words in there and the right <laughs> verbs about what you do. And Well said. That one rope foul off the bat of Case and Eubanks. I mentioned Eubanks filling in for Corey Berry, who is going to be the shortstop, was going to be a big piece, and pretty much returned everybody with the exception of two bats, but they were big ones for Wallace. And that's cut on a miss, so Clenny gets the strikeout to begin the fifth inning. He's set down all four bounders he's faced. You know, it's just, it, it, you can just feel such a different energy when pitchers come in and throw strikes. It's just a different speed of the game, and you're in control of the at-bat, and the breaking ball up in the zone a little bit, probably not where he wanted it, a bit of a mistake, but that higher-than-high breaking ball, tough to center up. And then immediately Darnell will pop one into shallow left, and Reynolds was able to backpedal and make the catch. Well done. Uh, practicing pop-up priorities, right? That goes into no man's land. Third baseman there, shortstop there, left fielder coming in. Understanding the left fielder has priority over the shortstop. The shortstop priority over the third baseman. They all go after it, and then you don't call it until you're sure going to be able to make the play. And at some point right there, Reynolds said, I got it. You saw that Balk moved out of the way, and he ended up making the play. Wilmot Skies went in the air to rather deep right center field, and this is going to be extra bases. Plenty had a chance to get three outs on three pitches after a strike three in the pop-up. But that one had some carry to it, and Wilmont gets the two-out double to right center. But again, when you're thinking about the score of the game, you know, it's throw strikes. No yes. no extra base runners. didn't walk anybody. So this didn't lead to a run scoring at all. It's a double. Look, you know what? You can work around this, but it's because he didn't make other mistakes by walking guys or hitting them that he's going to live to continue to, to work through this inning. Going after the cleanup hitter, the DH, Ellis Jean. Grounded out to third is last time in. Pitch in there for a strike. I started to mention that what Wallace lost last year was Kate Snell, the National Player of the Year, as both a hitter and a pitcher. He hit 396 with 70 RBIs and 13 home runs. And they also lost Carlos Vasquez, who hit 430 with 42 RBIs. And Coach Eiley said, well, everybody else is back, but those are two huge pieces out of your offense. And that really is one of the challenges when you're, you know, in these two-year programs of it, the turnover is pretty significant. And you've got to just continue the team building and the recruiting and finding the players that can fill in with the guys that leave. In the air to right. That's up there a long time, but it'll be caught by Horton, and that will end the inning. So, indeed, Clenny works around the two-out double by Wilmot. Just shortens the game. Going to send this one to the bottom of the fifth. It remains a five-run lead for Gulf Coast State. What's going on, guys? I am with Soldier Sports, and they just newly released their tank, BB Core Drop 3. Uh, the pop is insane. It's got an incredibly good feel. Feels a little bit like a voodoo with that balance feel. Uh, the hand is great, little flare knob. Um, but we're going to take some swings here, check out some max velos, and see how it tests. 97. 99. So as you can see, I mean, this thing's hot. 
Uh, it's got great feel. I'm really loving it. So go check it out. Soldier Sports US. Let's go. Being in the wild is the best when you're with your family. We do all kinds of different things at camp. Go fish. Surf. I think I'll probably be coming out here the rest of my life. Welcome back, 7 to our score. Let's hear from Craig Kozard, our PG college baseball guru, on the benefits of playing junior college baseball. People are realizing the value of a two-year education if that's what you want. Um, but they also realize that, you know what, now community college, junior college, or two-year schools, if that's what we want to call it, are real legitimate options for guys that want to get better. I can say one thing about junior college players. Uh, the vast majority of them are there because they are obsessed with the game of baseball. They love the game. They'll do whatever it takes to play the game because you're still not getting all the glitz and the glamour that you're getting at an SEC or a Power 5 school. Uh, but the development is at a totally different level, and the amount of play that you get puts you at a different level as far as preparation is concerned to transition to a four-year school. Yeah, glitz and glamour, those are words that don't often go hand-in-hand -hand with Chuco baseball as Byers is hit by a pitch from Lightsey to begin the bottom of the fifth inning. Got to love the game and playing four games into this tournament. Both of these teams undefeated playing for a championship, but the Commodores have a five-run lead. And now Lightsey's job is to continue not to let this grow any further. But he has to look at the top of the lineup. This is Reynolds. We've seen him play short and be busy today. He's walked twice with the bat and struck out. You know, to go back to what Craig Cozart was talking about, the, the passion of the players. Like, they love the game, and many of them play with a chip on their shoulder where they didn't get the opportunity to a four-year school, or they went to a four-year school and didn't get a chance to play. And now they just want to go and prove what they can do, and they want to prove to everybody what they might have missed out on of as them as a player and where they can go. And so it's, uh, it is a great group of, of players and the energy and the commitment to the game itself. I think that's perfectly said as Reynolds will shoot one down the line and right. That is a fair ball, and it's going into the corner. Well, Caps will come up with it. Byers never stopped running. He is going to slide across the plate with the eighth run on the double from Reynolds. You know, the previous half inning, we saw the double that didn't lead to anything because there wasn't a hit by pitch or a walk. This situation, we've got the hit by pitch, and now a double leads to a run scoring. And so, a great job by Reynolds driving it down into the corner there. Good relay, trying to get the ball in. Good hustle around the bases as well as Byers sliding head first to score the eighth run of the game. Now, I think that's worth repeating as Gupton steps in. Remember, he homered last inning. Last thing Lights he wanted to do was hit anybody to start an inning, but when you hit the nine-hole hitter with this talented lineup and then you turn it over, you're just really begging for some trouble. Big swing from Gupton, fouls one back. You were throwing out some comps on Gupton earlier, and I'm still trying to piece that together in my mind. I'm trying to think about a couple of the guys that he might have kind of a resemblance, and we always think kind of body type as well when we're trying to put something on a guy. That get him? It sure did. Doesn't yeah, have to it, hurt to it, count. He's got a little of a Jay Payton look that I had back in the day with the Mets out of Georgia Tech. Uh, but, I mean, you know, he's a big, strong young man, and he can fly. And, you know, you could see him on a college football field as a safety or cornerback somewhere. I wouldn't disagree with that at all. Now, after three straight have reached... We're going to have a pitching change. Keep in mind, this brings in the possibility of a run rule. I think it's 10 after 5, so four more runs would potentially end this game. And there's two runners on base, nobody out. And the governors are going to go to the bullpen and bring in another pitcher. We'll step aside, come back, tell you the fourth pitcher used so far by Wallace Community College right after this.
New pitcher is the fourth for the Governors. John LaCurto. A little funk to him, Kennesaw, Georgia native. Yeah, that's an interesting delivery and setup right there. And uh, the sidewinder coming in to face big Jeremy Todd at home plate here, the first baseman uh, for Gulf Coast State. And nobody out. So a hit batter, RBI double, hit by pitch. Spins that one a little bit low. And a couple of brothers, one played at Georgia College and State University, and another was at East Tennessee State. I wonder if they all threw this way. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wondering think about the it. same thing. What, what if the whole family side armors? <laughs> Makes it easier to hire a bullpen catcher of some yeah. sort if you know what you're going to yeah. deal with. Give the kid credit when you ask him who inspires him. It's the first time I've ever seen someone mention Ricky Bobby because he says, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> Obviously the funny guy on the team. Must be. Soft flare into right for a base hit. Everybody's going to move up. Let's see if Reynolds will score. Another base hit by Todd. Bases are loaded. That's four straight that have reached this inning. We're a grand slam away, I believe, from a run rule. And a big guy like Cole Horton, strong hitter coming up that has that ability to go deep. Doubled fly to center and walked. A little bit of energy coming out of that dugout right now for the number one seed, the Commodores, the host school, if you will. Good pitch, wave it a miss. Horton was ready to try and launch. I will say, Lacurto even brings it up himself. He said, uh, lengthy kid with weird arm slot, but gets good sink. Get a little more run there than sink. Well, infield in right here, and uh, you, know, you see the lead that uh, Gupton's getting off of second base. He can go as far as the shortstop and just react if it's a line drive to freeze. Horton, the cleanup hitter, three homers a year ago. Trying to gauge this uh, release point from Lacurdo. Didn't miss by much, maybe a little bit up and out. Big pitch for Lacurto. Maybe the count now has gone to three and two. Infield still in, ground ball. They're going to try to go home with it, cut down the lead runner, and hopefully get two by throwing a first after. Big wave and a miss. That was a nice sequence from Lacurto to get the strikeout of the dangerous Cole Horton. Well, you see the sidewinder, you know, a lot of times they work the bottom of the strike zone. and uh, But, you know, he goes up top with it out there to the outer third of the plate. And, you know, sidearm right hand or the right-handed hitter, if you give a little bit, then you take away your ability to reach that pitch on the outer side, outside corner. Ground ball to third, maybe a chance for two. That would have ended the inning off the bat of Bauckham. It's going to get an RBI on the fielder's choice, chasing home Reynolds with the ninth run. But Lacurdo, after he got the strikeout, just about got a DP that would have extricated himself from that base's loaded mess.
You see Grayson Ash coming out in front of home plate. The signs he's giving is to inform everybody what they're going to do in case there's a double steal. If the runner on first breaks, will they throw through? Will they fake it? What will they do in that situation? That's what he was signaling. Pitch missed in to Prozek, who has been hit by a pitch and also knocked in a couple of runs with a single. Pretty take tantalizing right pitch. Yes. Yeah, good take. Good take. Good lay off that. You know, left-handed hitter with these side armors, you really have to think about driving the ball to left field because everything, you know, the fastball runs away from you and you want to go with it and drive it to left. Or pull it down the first baseline. <laughs> Prosek, a freshman, Mississippi native. Runners on the corners. List that one back and out of play. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Here in the bottom of the fifth. Should end the inning. And Will, as Johnson makes the catch. A little bit of trouble there for the Governors. They allow a couple of runs to come across. Keeps this game alive as we go to the sixth. It's a 9-2 score with the Commodores in front in our championship game from Panama City Beach in the Baseball Classic. I never let myself believe that I was going to be in the big leagues. I always worked for it until I achieved it. Back in Puerto Rico, I remember my dad would hit me ground balls from the top of the hill. That forced me to always move my feet. There were no limits to where I could go, so I play with no limits. This was a year ago. Wallace over at Gulf Coast. A chance to finish off a championship, a soft chopper to third, and that ended it. And the Governors, four games into their season a year ago, celebrated a championship, took home the hardware. Went on to win 42 games against 19 defeats, and there's the trophy for this season. Inching a little bit closer as we move into the sixth inning. It's a 9-2 score. And Wallace coach Ryan Eiley was in his first year coaching the team last year, and they won that and had a terrific first season and right back in the final again this year. We might fast forward a year ago and see these same two teams kind of battling it out again. Plenty out there for his third inning in relief. This is Jake Smith. He's one for two. Right to short, right to Reynolds. He has been busy today, and his throw to first is true, and Smith retired. Well, the ball ate him up a little bit, but he stayed with it. You know, sometimes that happens where it gets in on you some, and, and that was pretty well hit. So it's not one you're going to have to charge and go get. But, you know, he was flat-footed having to try to make that throw across the infield, but he recovered nicely, uh, did Reynolds. Funny, as you started describing that, I was going to ask you if he just got flat-footed, whether the ball got on him too quickly or he didn't anticipate how fast that was coming off the bat. Yeah, it was pretty well hit, and you know, sometimes you just it kind of gets you in between. This is Caps, he's 0 for 2, couple of fielders' choices. Yeah. 
Plenty's done a nice job. Yeah, he reminds me of Derek Lowe, former pitcher for the Red Sox. And that arm angle? Yeah, the arm angle and the delivery and, you know, the sinker ball and just, you know, throwing strikes with it. And body That's actions. a great cop. I like that. As Caps rolls out to Prosec at second base. Two gone for Grayson Ash, who's 0 for a 1 with a walk. Sophomore out of Montgomery, Alabama. 34 runs driven in a year ago, and you talked about, I think, Steve, right before we went to break a couple of innings ago, the challenge of junior college baseball. You're constantly turning through half your roster for the most part every year. I think junior college coaches who have dealt with this for a long time, they look at college football or college basketball now and they say, hey, you guys can enjoy what we've had to do. And, you know, yeah. talking about the transfer portal at the higher levels and guys leaving free agency. But in some senses, you're constantly building or rebuilding at the junior college baseball level. And, and you know, it's not just about, you know, putting together a team that can win, but it's also, you know, getting the right kids and the right personalities and blending them in and, developing leadership and, and camaraderie on the roster and, and how do you do that on a regular basis when the names and faces keep changing? It's tough work. Yeah, it's really tough. Logan Johnson, the batter. And, I, you know, going through these bios from these kids, I was really curious with most what they thought they had gained over the last 12 months, where their game had improved. We have a pinch hitter here as well. Drew Shriver, the hitter. It's going to go to the backstop. I think most guys, though, and this was interesting to me at least, said they feel like as a hitter their pitch selection has gotten better. You know, just that comfort, I think, from seeing pitching in the fall, playing that many games, and just that experience where you're just a little more comfortable with your swing and what it entails. Yeah, because when you don't play a lot, you think to yourself, well, I need to get hits if I'm going to keep playing. And so you go up there thinking I need to swing all the time, when really sometimes the best thing to do is to take to prove that you can hit. And the confidence to know that, you know, you can pick up a breaking ball, that you're just not up there guessing, you're reacting. Right, and that, that one at bat is not the be-all, end-all for you, that it's just one of what will be many during the course of a season. That's a wave and a miss. That's a strikeout. Clenny has put forth three scoreless innings, giving up just one hit in that sequence. Sends this game to the bottom of the sixth. 9-2. The Commodores sit front. Bottom of the sixth inning, 9-2. Gulf Coast State in front. 
Nine runs, nine hits, two runs on three hits for the governor. Thanks for joining us today on PerfectGame.tv. Brett Dolan, Steve Phillips. Throw up a QR code on your screen soon. You can scan that. Download PerfectGame.tv for all of our content, our games, the events throughout the course of the year. Coming up after the conclusion of our championship game, we'll have the PG College Baseball Radio Show hosted by Darren Sutton and Hunter Pence. I think I'll be on with Hunter next week. Talk to LSU commit Connor Ware, head coach of Wabash Valley, Aaron Biddle. Lacurdo facing Wombles here in the bottom of the sixth. It's always fun for me to host that show, Steve, with uh, Hunter Pence. I was doing radio when this fresh-faced wild looking kid came up from the minors named uh, Pence that was doing all kinds sure. of damage his rookie year. And he did it differently, right? He looked differently, yes. different swing. Not the, nothing was really conventional about the way that he played, but he played hard and man, he had a passion for the game. Fans love Hunter Pence. There's no doubt about any of that. I mean, he threw a little bit awkward. He'll tell you that too. And he's got that open stance and he was gripping that bad and really just got off to an incredible beginning in his career. Won some championships late. Always a fun addition on these perfect game shows to get his thoughts, as it is you this week. And I know you've been working a lot with these games with Darren from the Panama City Beach College Baseball Classic. And we're kind of working our way towards the end of this championship game. And Wombles will walk to lead off the sixth. Well, it's been great to be part of it. And, and honestly, I've learned a lot myself through all of this about, you know, the impact of junior college baseball right now, the opportunity of junior college baseball right now. I don't know if it's ever been bigger or better than these last two or three years. And maybe college baseball will kind of normalize as Massey Bats as far as not being as old or having as many players on the roster. Maybe the backlog is the best term. But for the time being, you're seeing kids, and you used the right phrase earlier. These, these guys want to prove people wrong. You know, they want to go out and prove whether it's to themselves, their Division I coaches that looked at them, maybe didn't offer them opportunities that they can play. And someone told me once, and I use it often, you know, playing baseball is a lot of fun. Sitting and watching baseball is not if you're in that dugout and you're not getting a chance. Yeah, it's just it, it, you get anxious, you know, you get frustrated. And, and then when you do get an opportunity, you overtry because you're like, I need to do something. I have to get a hit if I'm going to play tomorrow. I have to get strike out the side if I'm going to get another opportunity to pitch. And, and the harder you try in this game, oftentimes the worse you do. Don't think you'll only hurt the team. Pitch to Massey is down and in. No, it makes sense, though. Again, you, you feel like instead of having the benefit of 200 at bats, you have 15 or 20. You need to make an impact. You need to do something. You rush yourself mentally, physically, and it rarely works out in your favor. When you get 200 at bats, you can breathe. When you get 15 at bats, it's like there's so much pressure in the in the small quantity of opportunities that you get that you put too much on for yourself, and it's hard to hit when you're tense in this game. And I think this is really where all of these teams, but certainly these two, Wallace and Gulf Coast, will benefit from this experience playing in front of scouts and some evaluators and people behind the backstop. Just a little different feel than maybe you would get in some of the first couple of weekends. As Massey will hammer one foul, just having the benefit of kind of jumping in. You know, you could dip your toe in the pool or you can just jump right in and do a cannonball. And for these teams, four games in against top competition, they're already somewhat battle-tested. And you find out a lot more about your players the higher the leverage moments. And, you know, so in this tournament, playing for a championship, playing for a trophy, you find out a lot about your team. Comebacker, Lakurdo couldn't find it. Maybe still an opportunity at first in diving, but safe at first is Massey. Players diving everywhere. Wombles in the second. Massey diving in the first. I thought that might cost him just a bit, but the ricochet off the glove of Lacurdo was a no man's land for a split second. Yeah, Lacurdo lost it for a minute, but uh, Eubanks does a good job recovering and trying to make the play on it. Uh, but the speed of Massey down the line, you mentioned earlier, relative of, of Ty Cobbs. Now, Ty would have had the sharpened spikes. He just would have stepped on the first baseman right. to be safe. Would have been blood and gore at yes. some point. Yes. Bank buyers. 
Instead of PG, it'd be PG-13 That's if there right. was blood and gore. Yes. <laughs> it yes. would not be pretty. <laughs> yes. Byers knocked in a run as the nine-hole hitter in the bottom of the first for a six-run frame. Now, it's been a little bit harder since then. Commodore's got a run in the fourth on the Gupton homer. They got two runs in the fifth. They are three runs away from a run rule if they don't want to take this game to the seventh. And again, nobody out. If Byers reaches, then they turn this lineup over for Reynolds and Gupton and Todd again. Two and one. You know, for Lakurdo, his his ball really moves a lot. But when that's the case, you can't start it at the corner because it then breaks in too far off the plate. Typically, you have this kind of movement. You want to start it at the center of the plate, and the two-seamer moves inside to the right-hander, away from the left-hander, and then your slider moves away from the right-hander into the left-hander to that back foot, but you want to split the plate. He gets the wave of a miss there. That was elevated, but Byers swung through it. Well, you know, you see so many pitches down in the zone where Lacurdo was pitching, and he changed his eye level on that one up in the zone. And that can be difficult on hitters. That's not fair. Give you a steady diet of pitches that are out and in and down, and all of a sudden you get one yeah. right over the heart of the plate at your belt. I said that all the time when I walked back to the dugout after striking <laughs> out as a player. It's not fair. Jack Reynolds has been on base three times, a couple of walks and a double. And that pitch right on the outside corner for strike one. I've been impressed with Reynolds this whole weekend. He's, he's a good-looking young player. He's, he's heady. You know, he understands his baseball IQ is very good. He can swing the bat, he can run, and he can really play some defense. It's fun when you get an evaluator, general manager, scout like yourself, that can see that because this kid played at Clemson. You know, you, you talk about some that are looking for an opportunity if things go right this year or next. Well, he had that opportunity, didn't play enough, so came here, much like Upton is on deck, who was at NC State. Obviously, they had the skills to get signed to a power school coming out of high school, but now trying to kind of get back on track. So, you know, it's about adjustments, right? It's about, you know, what did you learn? So that last swing, he got out in front a little bit on his front foot, and uh, the two-seam fastball ran away from him some. And so he stepped out, looked to regroup. Now with his visit to the mound, a chance to cycle all of what he's seen, all of the information that he's gained during the course of his at-bat, the read that he's getting with the ball out of the pitcher's hand. What is he feeling in there? And now a chance to regroup and be able to live for this next pitch. It's the constant cat-and-mouse game, the back-and-forth we do between pitcher and catcher and batter. Couple of runners aboard, one out, bottom of the sixth inning. Big pitch forthcoming from LaCurto to the leadoff hitter, Jack Reynolds. Big 2-2 pitch up coming. Spoiled foul. Well, it's a tough part of the lineup. You think about the top of this lineup and what Reynolds is, means to this team as the catalyst leading off. And then Gupton with that elite speed who also homered uh, uh, earlier in the game, too. And then Jeremy Todd, who's like a monster uh, in the batter's box. And so a couple runners on right now. This is a really tough lineup to pitch to. Yeah, they're going to do a lot of damage from beginning to end of this season. It's ball three, up and out. Good take, patient approach at the plate. Feels like he's seen about 20 pitches where it's been more like seven or eight. Popped up, down the line and left, and it'll be at a play. 
really battling right here. This is, I mean, both for both guys, Lacurdo and uh, for Reynolds, just battling during the course of this at bat. It's interesting watching Wumbles uh, leading off second base. He's a catcher, and it seems to me he's trying to signal to uh, Reynolds pitches. He keeps grabbing his helmet and like a signal, like I've got it, I've got it. Like I'm trying to watch him. In, in the cat and mouse game. And at one point, they had a visit to the mound where I think they went through their signs again as to where they're going. But see if he knows what's coming. Interesting. Here's the 3 2. Served in the air, down the line and right. Into the corner. They just hit a three run homer. They win the game. Jack Reynolds with that lengthy at back kept spoiling pitches. Finally sent one down the line and right, kept it fair, and makes it 12 to 2. This was a great adjustment at the plate because he had been getting so many pitches outside that they came in on this, and he just dropped the bat head to the ball. It wasn't the purest, sweetest swing, but he got the right part of the bat, the barrel to the baseball, to drive it out of the ballpark. And you see it right here. He kind of just pulled it through a little bit down in the zone, but he got the bat head out in front and drove it. Nothing like taking away a little bit of the drama. I thought we were in run rule territory, and we were. So anchor down, Gulf Coast State runs the table to win the Panama City Beach College Baseball Classic. They do so in dramatic fashion. Jack Reynolds with the three-run homer to win it 12-2. Watching the defense stand out there, Steve, and I thought maybe I'm missing something, but then you heard the celebration and you knew that uh, the Commodores got the win. And I would say, I'll just echo what you mentioned a couple of moments ago. This is a tough lineup, and it feels like they're going to do a lot of damage offensively. Yeah, listen, both of these teams are really good teams, and, and you know, we know that uh, late in the year they're going to be playing some really important games as well. A year ago, it was being celebrated on the other side with Wallace walking off with the win. And this year, obviously, Gulf Coast with the victory and winning the tournament as well. There's the trophy presentation. Last year, Wallace got the uh, championship. This year, the Commodores get it, the number one seed. And Steve, nothing is easy in this event. I mean, they had wins of two to one and four to three, also a five nothing victory before today. And you've got to earn it when you pick up four wins in four days against top notch competition. Uh, you really do. You go back to the first inning of this game. I mean, Wallace scored two runs in the, in the top of the first inning, and it felt like, geez, this might get away from us a little bit here early. And the next thing you know, Gulf Coast State just comes back. They persevered, they overcame some adversity, and they go on to win this one in extraordinary fashion. Well, that's worth revisiting right there. Not just a 12-2 win. That's 12 unanswered after the two runs by the Governors in the top of the first inning. And look, this is a team victory right here. You see everybody as part of this celebration. And, you know, whatever little bit you got in during the course of a tournament like this where they won all, all of the games that they played, I think it's a statement about this, this team uh, and what hopes they have for the rest of the year right now as they move to 8-0 on the season. It's the de facto host school. It's always important to uh, welcome in these top schools from around the region and the country. But it is indeed Gulf Coast State to win the 2024 Panama City Beach College Baseball Classic. And they do so with the three-run homer from Jack Reynolds to win it. Steve, I enjoyed it. A lot of fun. Awesome job. Busy week of baseball. Special thanks to... Darren Sutton, who was uh, on the call for most of these games, along with Steve Phillips. It's been great to have Steve with us and his insight and expertise. And for our entire crew, thanks so much for tuning in throughout the course of the week from Panama City Beach. Once again, it was a six-inning run rule contest. Gulf Coast State with a 12-2 win. They take home the trophy. They win the championship. 12-2 again, our final. Anchor down the doors. The Commodores win it. So long and good afternoon from Panama City Beach on perfectgame.tv.